Have you ever tried sewing with double gauze? It's wonderfully soft, but when I started sewing a big stack of double gauze napkins, I quickly realized I had to adapt my technique to keep my sanity. As I walk you through this tutorial, I'll share my top tips for working with double gauze and sewing mitered corners. Double gauze is a beautiful soft fabric. It's made from two layers of loosely woven cotton. Then those layers are attached to each other with a tiny stitch about every centimeter. Because of the loosely woven nature of the fabric, it can be easy to stretch it out whilst you're working with it. So that makes it a little bit harder to work with than, for example, plain woven cotton. So be mindful not to stretch out the fabric, especially for the mitered corners. If it does happen, try to reshape it and then check with your ruler. But before we dive into the tutorial, you want to make sure your fabric is pre-washed because cotton fabrics like double gauze tend to shrink quite a bit. Also check your sewing needle. If you run it off the sewing needle, off the tip of the sewing needle, there shouldn't be any scratches on your nail. You should just glide off with no problem. If you're not sure or if you hear a thumping sound when you're sewing, check the tip of the needle to see if it's blunt and in doubt, always replace it. And if you want to be super prepared, you can fill up an extra bobbin. Because I wanted to use up the entire piece of fabric, I gave it a press and then I straightened the edges. So before measuring, I knew exactly how much fabric I had to work with. And you know, the edge is straight when you can pull a continuous thread from the bottom of the fabric. A while ago, I did a couple of test napkins in a similar fabric. That way I could see if I liked the fabric and what size I would enjoy. And I used those napkins to roughly check how many I would be able to get out of this big piece of fabric. The width of my fabric was about 110 centimeters, which meant I could fit three napkins measuring 36 centimeters. Of course, this includes seam allowances, so the end result will be smaller. When fabric is longer than my table, I tend to fold it up to measure it. And this piece was 63 centimeters times four layers. And from those 250 centimeters, I could get seven napkins. I think the biggest lesson I learned from working with double gauze is to go slow to go fast, which means that it takes time to fix mistakes. And especially in a fabric like double gauze, unpicking it is no fun. So spending the time to press and prep everything correctly, it will save you time in the long run. So instead of folding up the fabric and using a rotary cutter to cut the strips, I first marked out all the 36 centimeter sections before I even cut into the fabric. Then I pulled a single thread out of the fabric at each 36 centimeter interval. And that way I could see a line in the fabric allowing me to cut exactly on grain. And marking out the sections first allowed me to check if my measurements were actually correct, uh, because if I was incorrect, the last measurement would be way off. I was a little bit under 36 centimeters, but that's fine. It's not something I will notice in the end product. I do have to admit that pulling out that thread every 36 centimeters took me a long, long time. But I just put on some YouTube video or a podcast and didn't think about it too much, just took one step at a time. After that, as of course, I still had to separate the single napkins by dividing the longer strips into threes. I used the same technique of pulling that thread out and then following a line in the fabric, but luckily this time it went so much faster. To prepare the border of the napkins, the first step is to fold the raw edge in by one centimeter or three eighths of an inch. Now first I would sort of lightly finger press the edge at one centimeter, measuring often, but after a couple of napkins, I would just eyeball it. 
In this step, it's more important to get a straight edge and not a precise one centimeter fold. So if you have one side folded at one centimeter and another at 1.2, it won't really affect the mitered corner. Now the end result might not be a perfect square. However, you won't really notice and especially when it's covered in mayonnaise. I'd rather keep going than constantly measure. So aiming for an even edge is more important than aiming for that perfect one centimeter fold. While you are pressing that edge in, you wanna make sure that you lift your iron. So you wanna press down, uh, lift the iron, move to a new location and press down again. If you leave the iron on the fabric and do it in sort of an ironing motion, then you have a good chance of sort of distorting and shifting the fabric. And then at the end of the folded line, you will have a small corner poking out and you want to avoid that. I mean, I think that's just what pressing is, but um, it can be tempting to keep the iron on the fabric and just push it around. But especially with double gauze, uh, it, it's, it's just not a good idea. This is where double gauze can be a bonus because if you can clearly see the little stitches in the fabric, you can use them to guide you as you fold and press the fabric. Now the second fold will determine the final width of the border. So in my case, that's two and a half centimeters or one inch. You can always go narrower, but I really like the chunky look of this one. Where with the previous step, it was fine to sort of eyeball that one centimeter. For this step, I would really take the time and measure. It will help with both a good looking mitered corner and an even looking border around your napkin. I think what really helped me in this step was to work in small sections and keep a very sort of light touch on the fabric. It's hard to explain, but with the double gauze fabric, it sticks to itself. So there's a lot of small little shifts and then tapping the fabric to get it in place and then moving on to another section, measuring again, a lot of back and forth. But once you've sewn the mitered corners and you turn the edges, it will just fall into place and it's, it's going to be all worth it. To mark the mitered corner, we're going to unfold that second fold, but leave that one centimeter fold intact. Then measuring from the very corner, mark out five centimeters on either side. Then connect those points. And ideally you should 
have a marking through the intersection of those creases. And where did I come up with the five centimeters? Well, you double the width of your border. So two and a half plus two and a half centimeters is five centimeters. Or one plus one inch is two inches. Even though this method works really well, I did get annoyed by my geometric ruler snagging on that one centimeter folded edge and I couldn't see myself doing it this way another 80 times. Instead I would focus on matching the zero on my ruler to the intersection of the creases and I would match that zero line to the tip of the corner and I would see if there would be an equal distance on either side. So it should be three and a half centimeters on one side and three and a half centimeters to the edge on the other side. I didn't always hit that three and a half centimeters on either sides perfectly. I did it this way a couple of napkins and then I found out um, the end result looked good so this was a way for me. I think that's really nice when you're batch sewing because then you can ask yourself questions like what if I do it this way or what if I do it that way and then you can really customize sort of the method that you're using to your skill level and also to your preference. We're on to another really important step. The way you align these edges will affect the final look of the mitered corner, so take your time. One thing I found helpful when pinning these corners was evening out and aligning the fabric a little bit further than just a point. So a good five centimeters or 10 centimeters past the point where you're actually pinning. And then I would stretch the point between my fingers and pin. If you are like me and batch sewing a couple of napkins, take your time to think about which direction of pinning is best, because once you're behind the sewing machine, you want to have good access to pull out the pin. If you don't properly line up the edges, the inner corner of your border will look a little bit off. And besides it not looking as nice, it's also more noticeable once you sew over it. So I'm going to share a couple of tips for making sure that those inner corners line up nicely. One thing I did to make sure that the edges stayed aligned was put the needle down before I moved the pin. Another thing you might notice is that I didn't start sewing right at the edge of the fabric. I start somewhere in that one centimeter seam allowance and then I stitch back towards the edge. That way my project has a little bit better grip with the feed dogs and the presser foot. And also if it doesn't transport well, I can use the thread tails to sort of, I wanted to say pull, but it's more like guiding the project through the sewing machine. Pulling things through your sewing machine is never a good idea. You might break a needle, so just put some tension on those thread tails and then let the machine do the rest. To secure your thread, you want to backstitch at the start, but also at the end of the stitch line. However, it can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes the fabric scrunches up if you have to backstitch all the way at the edge of the fabric. So I'm showing an alternative method here. And what I'm doing is once I get close to the edge, I dial down the stitch length. I'm not really looking at the dial, but I dial it down to about one millimeter.
you want to sew right to the edge of the fabric. However, I'm a little bit um, enthusiastic with my foot pedal, so I tend to sew off the edge. That sort of twists the thread tails, which makes it a little bit harder to tie. Now you can tie both thread tails at once, but I always have trouble lining up that little knot right up to the fabric. So what I do is I make three little knots on top of them and cut off the thread, leaving about a centimeter or three eighths of an inch of uh, tail because that will protect the knots. I don't quite know why I was doing this on my knee because it's a lot easier if you can sort of tension the fabric with one of your fingers on a table or an ironing board and then, um, then you can easily butt up the knots to the fabric edge. If you don't have any problem with the fabric scrunching up at the fabric edge, just do the back stitching thing. But I just wanted to show it because it's such a fun technique and you can also use it for darts. There is a downside if you make a mistake, unpicking the tiny stitches is a pain. So, you know, use with caution. After sewing all the corners, you can snip off the points. You can leave quite a generous seam allowance, so half a centimeter or a quarter inch. Now to open up the seam, of course you can use an iron, but I'm going to use my point turner to press it open. Uh, you can also do this with your finger or your nail. Then take the little top and press it flat. Press down with your thumb and then turn. I'm using the point turner to poke out the very tip. If you did your pressing and marking and everything with care, after turning, the tip should already lie pretty flat, but of course we're going to press everything once all the corners are turned. A lot of times with a seam like this that you turn inward, you want to reduce bulk and trim the edges and snip off the tip. This fabric is quite loosely woven and I want to prevent it from coming undone. And by carefully pressing the seam open and pressing down the tip, I don't feel that it's too bulky or interfering with sewing. After turning out all the points, it's time to press the edges so that I can top stitch the border. In this step, you will find out if you press everything neatly at two and a half centimeters or one inch, or if you are slightly off. Now, don't worry about doing it perfectly. Uh, if somehow the, the border naturally falls somewhat narrower or somewhat wider than uh, the, the two and a half centimeters, I would say go with it. You want to make sure that if it's wider on one end and a little bit narrower on the other end, that it sort of tapers slowly towards that the difference. But otherwise, if it sort of looks good from a little bit of a distance, then it's good enough. Even though the fabric doesn't really shift that much once it's folded in like this, I do add a couple of pinches to make sure everything stays in place. And again, when I'm pinning, I do take into account the direction that I'm sewing in so that it's easier for me to pull them out whilst I'm sewing. Whenever I sew close to the edge, I like to position my needle slightly off center. Then I position the edge of the folded fabric to the gap in the presser foot. And while I'm sewing, that's what I'm focusing on. I'm not looking at the moving needle. I'm just focusing on lining up that edge of the folded fabric to the gap in the presser foot. When you're getting close to the corner, there is no shame in slowing down. Just use the hand wheel to get those final couple of stitches before you have to pivot in the corner.
You want to try and get the needle to hit exactly on that little seam of the mitered corner. However, it can be a little bit tricky. And there's one little trick that I like to do that's holding the fabric whilst I'm turning the hand wheel. So here I'm going to push down on the fabric with one of my fingers just in front of the presser foot. And what happens while I turn the hand wheel, it slightly stretches the fabric. And that way I can position the seam in the miter corner and the needle a little bit more precisely. Now you may have noticed that I didn't backstitch when I started sewing and that was on purpose. Because when I reach the starting point, that's when I'm going to sew over those starting stitches and backstitch to secure the thread. I do like to pull the thread tails out of the way so that they don't get tangled up once I backstitch. Now the napkin is all done. All it needs is a little snap to cut off the thread tails and a final press before they start their life as beautifully handmade napkins. 